the way up, sit in first class. Pedal to the metal, tank full of gas. Can't slow down, I'm moving too fast. Headed back to the county, riding full blast. I'm all the way up, sitting first class. Pedal to the metal, gas on smash. I can't slow down, I'm moving too fast. Headed back to the county, we gotta roll down. Yeah, I'm rolling up with the big dogs, but I ain't playing. Got my helmet and shoulder pads. What was you saying? Trouble down in the boondocks. Well, I roll up with a hunting rifle and two clocks. Well, hello everybody and welcome back for another video as I take this old pickup truck bed trailer and transform it into an all-terrain teardrop. At least that's the goal anyway. Major disclaimer, I am not a professional as you see from my cardboard face shield here. So do not take what I do here as gospel. This is just how I'm going to do it. Now you can't expect perfection with something like this. So after I got the bed off, I did some inspection here and figured out I had some bad spots. This thing here was a big dent, kind of came up. So I had to hammer that down, make it flat, and then I'll just weld that up some. Then I also have this other little break in here that's gonna have to be welded as well. And then the front tongue here, this little section's got a big crack in it. That crack is just uh, from stress over time. It needs to be welded back up. Now the great thing about this trailer is the suspension system. As you see, the axle just bolts onto it. So I can get any tubular axle and take this one out of there and put a new one in its place. And I've already got the suspension lined up there. Shock towers there built, all nice and ready to go. All I have to do is just buy some new shocks, a new axle, and bolt them into place, clean them up some, and it'll be good to go. Dodge really made it easy for this thing to mount up with the shocks. Look at that, just got this nice little arm here that bolts right onto the shackle spring. This is going to be a piece of cake to change that axle out. When the time comes, I'll buy some new shocks, mount them up here, and get rid of all this loose stuff and rustiness. Isn't it amazing how good things look when they're wet? <laughs> Still rusty and ugly, though. Next stop is to take this over and have somebody add four feet to the tongue. Now that I can see what I'm working with, it's time to hit the drawing board. Figure out how I want to make this thing look, how it's going to end up coming together, and figure out where to start. Most logical starting place is to fix what's broke and make this thing safe to haul. Now I had this piece of tongue here added on, uh, actually paid a guy to do it, and he really didn't do a very good job, but I can't really discredit him. He was a logger, not a fabricator, and just didn't use uh, the right kind of steel to, to put this together. So what I'm doing here, I'm kind of cleaning this up. I'm gonna go ahead and primer everything as I go because you know it rusts a lot here in Oregon. And then I'm gonna cut this piece of steel here and make a basically a brace that's gonna go in the front of this thing and it's gonna really stiffen up my tongue. Please don't laugh, this is the first time I'm using this corded sawzall. Haven't used a corded sawzall in decades. And I just picked up this skills sawzall just for this job and I'll tell you what, it's, it's doing its job. It really cut like a dream. You might be laughing at me a little bit here. I don't have any cooling oil. I'm using a little WD-40 to keep my blade cool. It's just what I got in hand. It's probably not the best for this. And here's the finished cut. I was kind of happy to see that once I cut that loose that the sides actually started to bend out. That made it a whole lot easier here to make it shape the way I wanted it to. My old wooden block here is an anvil, but I was able to bend it out fairly easy and get the shape I desired. Now I've got all my pieces cut, it's time to do a little dry fitting here. This big piece, I was really impressed how well it went together. The welds here on the top kind of gave me some grief uh, where I did the last repair. But I figured, well, if I weld the tube together and then come back, I can actually hammer that down and just kind of flatten it over the, the other beads there. So what I'm doing here is just kind of lining up some support. I actually got a couple pieces of uh, tubing that I've put underneath the front of this axle here 
not this axle, I'm sorry, the tongue, in order to stabilize the, the long arm that's going forward there to give that tongue a lot more support. And I'll weld all that stuff together and then I'll weld the top on there. At least that was my plan anyway. Letting you in on a little secret here. I actually had to weld this thing on three times. I couldn't get it to take. Uh, I don't know if it's my inexperience or my machine, but this is the third attempt at it. Well, unfortunately, there's just no way this welder is gonna weld this quarter inch tubing together. I tried, these are all beads cranked up to the highest setting that it has and uh, lowered the wire speed, raised the wire speed. Just can't penetrate the tube here. I and mean, you can see it barely even marred it. So, gonna have to pay somebody to weld that on for me. Somebody with a bigger welder. Maybe somebody with a different setup. Um, hopefully I can talk a friend into to taking his arc welder to it and just stitching down the sides and here on the sides. And, Maybe I'll get the bolt on. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. I bet you this stuff's not going to be fun to drill through. But my setup over here, this uh, Forney Easy Welder 40FCI. Boy, that's hard to say for some reason. Um, it's not quite as advertised. It says it's supposed to be a sizzle to weld up to a quarter inch materials, but it's not welding a quarter inch material. It's not even touching it. In fact, it's barely getting the eighth inch stuff done. Now, it could be because I'm running it off of this Westinghouse generator. It's a 5300 with a 66 peak and a 55 average run. Now, according to the manufacturer, this should only need 45 running watts. So I should be above what I need to run this welder here on my power rating. Um, every now and then it does stall a little bit and I can kind of feel it in the arc. But uh, for the most part, it's consistent and runs through. It just doesn't have the power to penetrate this crazy half inch. Not, sorry, it's not half inch. This tough quarter inch steel here, it just won't do it. It just won't do it. But this eighth inch steel here that's on the frame, it actually did okay. And same with the plate that I bought. So I've reinforced this tongue here. I've welded it down at the bottom where it wasn't before. Um, I've also extended this tongue here and made it wider so this will fit better. I have to get a drill bit in order to make that correct and make that work well. But for now, it's going to work all right. Time to clean up the tube, get it ready for paint. I decided to take this time to uh, grind this little tongue down a little bit better just to make the top fit better where that weld repair is that I put in just so it fits nice and tight. So I really want a teardrop but I also don't want to lose my summer. So this isn't going to be the norm every week a new video for this trailer. Um, this weekend I'm probably going to go out and have some fun take out my canoe maybe do a little camping and do something like that. Um, I can't just dedicate my whole summer to this trailer although I really love to it's so fun throwing sparks you know. But, you know, I only have so much good weather here in uh, the Oregon coast, so I have to take advantage of it while I got it. So this may end up being a midwinter ending project, but we'll see. Here's the tube, all finished up, looking pretty. Ready to be welded on, get some paint. See right here, I grinded it down nice and tight over that weld so it fits good. Still left some meat on the end there to weld to. Should work pretty nicely. In case you're wondering about my do-rag here, this thing was born out of necessity. It actually is a, a baseball hat with the brim cut off. And uh, you can still see it underneath there. And I coated it up with uh, this bandana just to make it more comfortable. And, uh, no brim so I can put my welding helmet on and move it on easy and be able to move to the next thing. My baseball hat kept getting in the way. And uh, this keeps my hair from getting burned. Hope you like it. And here we are with the little Cyphercraft Ingenuity. Took some cargo straps, hooked one on my son's Jeep, hooked it to the trailer, hooked the trailer to my truck, 
pulled them opposite of one another, holding that tongue nice and tight. So now I have a nice, good, stable place to drill. There's that good old WD-40 lubing up my drill bit, just keeping things cool. There it is, all mounted up pretty like. So in lieu of welding, I decided to bolt this big beam on here. So I drilled a hole in it, drilled a hole through the two inch tube, ran it all the way through, bolted it up tight. And then I, I had some old U-bolts laying around, decided to use those, got a couple more of them, mounted the jack stand and I should have cut those off. So wham, that's what they look like cut off. I wish that would have came out better camera wise, but didn't do it intentionally. Anyway, there's a couple more U-bolts for you, and uh, that's just waiting to get welded right there. I'm a real fan of these flip-up wheeled jack stands. They're great. Only thing is, uh, I screwed up. This one's not quite long enough. It needs to be like another four inches. So eventually I'm gonna have to cut this tube, make it a little longer, and it'll work better. And just where it's mounted at, it won't matter if it's a little longer, because. As you see, I don't even have it cranked all the way up and there's still plenty of space there to be able to fold it away. Well, there you go. There's a wrap on this video. That's the frame. The next step is the deck. I wanna take this thing over and weigh it, see where we're at. The goal is to try to keep this thing under 1500 pounds. Then I don't have to register it here in my state, even though I still will take it over and title it just so no one can steal it. But currently we're at 700 pounds. God bless. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.